Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be my combined review for both the M9 Gernsback version IV and the M9 Gernsback Commander type version IV or version 4 or version IV is in Invisible Victory. However you want to look at that, this is the 160 scale arm slave from Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory. And we previously took a look at the Arbalest and this is pretty much the exact same kit with just some different shoulders and different head and some different weapons and accessories. So there's two different versions sold separately, so you have, can't buy them both uh, together as a set, unfortunately. But hopefully this review will help you guys decide if you just want to get one, which particular version you may prefer. So yeah, basically it just comes down to which head design you like more and which weapons you want more. Honestly, I think having both of them is is, is pretty cool because then you have quite a, diff quite a lot of different options. And as you saw, if you watched the Arbalest review, that this is a really, really nice kit, uh, in ter just in terms of the overall articulation and details, part separation. Compared to Gumpla, I kind of put it somewhere between high grade and real grade. It's definitely got much more detail than your average high grade kits. Maybe something similar to like some of the IBO kits are pretty detailed, I guess, but um, it has a lot of part separation in there. It has some, some really small parts and just a lot of detail, really kind of like a real grade kit, but it doesn't have the full inner frame or anything. So it's not quite that complex. But they're really nice. In terms of their size, they're a little bit larger than a 144 scale, than the average 144 scale Gundam kit. Uh, but they're definitely not like 100 scale, like master grade size. So they're a little bit kind of in between, maybe something similar to like one of the larger high grade kits, like the Sazabi or the Unicorn Gundam or something like that, around 23 meters in height, something like that. So just a reminder too, on the price, these are listed as 2,800 yen each, which is not too cheap, but again, that just comes down to what Bandai has to pay for in licensing and other things. They're just kind of more limited in terms of their production compared to Gunpla. So there's reasons why they're more expensive, but as consumers, it still does kind of suck for us that it's more expensive. Fortunately for you guys uh, in the US, you guys can get these on USA Gundam Store. You can check the link to their site there down below. You can use my coupon code there, ZakuRelease10, to save 10%. So that makes this closer to 20 bucks plus shipping. Really not too bad, I think, for these. All right, so let's run through the stickers and articulation, which is going to be exactly the same on both kits. So we can just look at one of them here on the head. It's got a sticker there, like a shiny metallic green one there for the visor. It's got a couple little yellow ones there for the side of the head. On the Arbalest, fortunately, that was actually a yellow piece. On these kits, though, uh, that's a gray piece, and you have to put a couple little yellow stickers on that. So that's kind of unfortunate, but I can understand why this that would have been just only one yellow piece, where the Arbalest does have a few other yellow pieces involved with that. So anyway, down here on the crotch, this has the sticker there on the top of the crotch piece again same as the arbalest and then on the back of the legs though it has these stickers going across the back there you can see so it's covering up like this whole part of the back of the leg which is in just that lighter gray color but it's meant to be in these other two shades so got a pretty big sticker there but fortunately that's pretty much it so there's a couple little missing color apps but considering the thing is just all gray even if you didn't use the stickers i mean it would still be all gray so it's not like you're missing like a big bright orange accent or something on there for the articulation, the head will go up to there, which is pretty nice, and then down to there, which is also really nice. Just detail everything around on these. I mean, the head and everywhere else included, the detail on them is really, really nice. The head also can move forward like this. Now, I'm told, what I didn't know in the review of the Arbalest, that apparently that's where the cockpit is. So, like, this is sort of like a cockpit hatch, I guess, apparently. And again, just a reminder to you guys that these are in 160 scale, but they're obviously not the same size as a Gundam. They're not, like, gigantic. Uh, so while it's the same size scale as a perfect grade, they're obviously much smaller. So anyway, we have some really nice bending here in the stomach as well. There's two joints that will give you a really nice stomach crunch there and bend backwards like so. You can bend side to side there at the base as well. It looks a little bit goofy because it's bending here. We would assume that it should bend like higher up here, but either way it does bend side to side and then rotation there of course as well. The shoulders will pull out forward to there. You have that uh, swinging out polycap that gives you a nice shoulder reach, but then also the whole chest also folds over to the side like that, so you can get a really nice reach there across the front of the body like so. These shield bits here on the side of the arm are on a double ball joint, so you can kind of move those around in all sorts of different ways, rotate that however you might want to pose up that shield. I wish there was kind of like a lock position to just keep it like centered, just like right where it's supposed to be, right where you want it, because when you're trying to pose the kit, if it's like kind of moved out of the way, I kind of want to move it around like that and move it around like that and just adjusting that to get it just right, but that may be just a little pet peeve. Then the arm will fold up, up, 
up very high up to about there which is pretty good it's not like a complete vertical bend but it's a nice reach upwards and then of course the arm will just rotate there at the top double joint here in the elbow giving you a full bend there and then the hand is just on a ball joint here as you can see on the kit we do have a set of open hands and holding hands so we have two sets of hands for each kit you also notice one of the very few seam lines on the kit is here on the shoulder, so you'll have to wipe that out just right there for, through the top of the shoulder. Not really too big of a deal. Obviously, it doesn't really have any skirt armor except for this bit here on the back, which will move up and down a little bit slightly there. And so you've got no problem bringing the leg way out to the side, all the way forward, all the way back. It's really not going to be an issue. Up underneath the hip here, if you remove this piece, you can plug this onto an action base there like so. This whole hip joint will also slide downwards a little bit and that will give you a little bit better range for when you want to do like a kneeling pose or something like a kneeling and sniping pose or something like that. Uh, that little bit of movement there in that hip joint will give you a little bit better articulation there so that's nice as well. And then obviously the legs will just rotate there at the top. You get a nice double bend here in the knee giving you some nice separation there of that little knee armor. You can see just really nice detail all around here on the legs. The ankle armor will move up and down a little bit. This part here on the back will fold down the whole ankle actually moves back like in the middle of the lower leg right there which is kind of interesting rather than at the ankle joint so it moves back there and then you can put the foot forward there at the front so you have some nice detail there up underneath pointing the toe down so we'll just work like that it looks a little bit weird because you have like the front of the leg sticking out there but it does work pretty effectively side to side you've got no problems there getting a, any sort of wide stance out of this will not be an issue okay now before we get into the accessories and everything pointing out what's different among those i just want to give you guys a better look at both of the heads here so again this is just the normal type it has this very like big bulbous head there and this other one has it's almost sort of like reminiscent of a graze sort of in a way like the Rusei go kind of has a similar kind of look to it both of the heads are actually pretty cool. I've come to enjoy both of them pretty nice. So that's why I say it's kind of nice to have both. But if you have to choose between one of the two, I don't know, what do you guys think? Which do you like more? So let's first go over the accessories that both of the kits share. As I mentioned, they both come with a set of those holding hands like this. They both come with a mono monocular cutter or just a kind of simple combat knife here that can be stored in there. And then this uh, attachment piece for that, which will allow you to attach, attach this onto the back skirt. Alternatively, you can attach this just via this peg onto the side skirt or kind of like side of the thigh like there. And then they both come with this 40 millimeter rifle, which is just kind of this uh, very simple, cool looking machine gun. And you have a connection piece for this as well. So this one you can just put onto here like this. And then with that connection piece, you can store this onto the back skirt as well if you wanted to. And then they both come with this simple kind of machine gun weapon here, which is the same as what the Arbalest came with. But in this case, we have different attachment parts that you'll add onto these. So this is where the two of these uh, kits will start to differ. So the regular Gernsback will give you the parts to make the assault carbine here. You can see it has the longer barrel there, of course, and this grenade launcher there up underneath. And then the commander type Gernsback doesn't have the grenade launcher there underneath, but it has this uh, extended stock here in the back, which is kind of weird because it's like off to the side. It looks kind of weird even between the two I definitely prefer just the one with the grenade launcher underneath but you do have the option now with these and you can mix and match those parts and now from here it's completely different so let's just focus on the regular Gurns back first the regular Gurns back comes with this anti-tank dagger I'm not really sure why this tiny dagger is the anti-tank dagger instead of the other one but it's this tiny little thing the arbalest does come with this but the arbalest has it permanently fixed to its face it can't actually hand hold it because it has like some like attachment points on there so if you want to actually have one handheld this is the only option for that and then the regular Gernsback also comes with this big long sniper rifle this is about the same height as the Gernsback itself so it's pretty tall and it can be collapsible as well so you can pull off this camera here on the top and attach that onto the side pull off the bipod and reattach that up like so and then just fold the barrel back like that to have it collapsed like so and this little peg on the underside there will allow you to attach this here right onto the backpack so you can carry it like that on its back very cool and now for the specialty weapons for the commander type the commander type comes with this large monomolecular cutter so it's basically just like the the smaller one but now it's just this long full-on sword yeah you think you could use the same connection connection part to put this on the back skirt or you can of course just attach this onto the side i think where it's supposed to go but very cool if you are the kind of person that likes to have a big old sword and then its other weapon is the wire gun i think this is not really more much of a gun as it is just like sort of a grapple hook basically a grappling wire and how this works is you'll take the forearm so this would work on any of the kits because they all have the same forearm uh, you just pull off this part here on the top of the forearm like that 
plug this down into there and this is essentially going to make it very similar to like a, a goof's heat rod and you're meant to just plug this part back onto the top of there but it doesn't seem very solid but i think it's it's on there well enough anyway so and then you just have this wire which can just be manipulated as you like on the end there is just kind of this little kind of hook dealy and you can do whatever you want i don't really know what you're going to do with that but it looks cool anyway Okay, and so there you go. There's both of the kits with their kind of signature weapons for them. I gotta say, yeah, it'd be, it would be really hard to choose between one of the two of these. It kind of just basically comes down to what kind of mobile suits, I guess, maybe you really like. If you're the kind of person that likes stuff with like sniper rifles or big guns, I know there's some people uh, out there who definitely do prefer that. Or if you're the kind of person that likes more like close range combat, the sword and the grapple hook of the commander type would be more appealing to you. So kind of, you, you can't really lose either way. I think you get... I think they're for on for both kits. I think you can't really lose either way because with either kit you're getting just a really nice solid kit and a really nice set of accessories. So it's not like one definitely has the advantage over the other. I think they're pretty equal in terms of what's included with the kit and just the the quality of what's included with the kit. Both have really cool gimmicks. The sniper rifle being collapsible is really cool. The the wire having that wire accessory and there's a lot of fun you can have with that and doing different kinds of fun poses and things. If you wanted just a kit just to be standing and not in any sort of like dynamic pose, I guess then the wire wouldn't really be all that helpful. I guess you could like use it in some sort of way, but ultimately, yeah, both of these are pretty great. So there you have it, the Arbalest, the Gernsback, and the Gernsback Commander type. All three very fantastic kits. Basically the same kits, a little bit different colors, a little bit different weapons, different heads, different things going on there, here and there. But at the center, they're pretty much all three versions of the same kit. And so what do you guys think? Do you want to have them all? Have you already bought all of them? Or what do you guys think about the possibility of Bandai making any more of these? Some people have asked if I think that Bandai will go ahead and make more from the series or their different variations and things. Uh, I kind of doubt it. I kind of think that this is probably it, what we see here. I don't think that Bandai will go on making more of these. I could be wrong, but hey, who knows? As you guys may well know, Kotobukiya and Aoshima, both also are two different model companies, also make Full Metal Panic kits, and I actually will be getting the Aoshima kit here probably pretty soon, so you guys should see a review of that kit uh, pretty soon in the near future, and I'll be able to compare that here to the Bandai version, and we'll take a look at that. In the meantime, guys, hopefully this review has been helpful for any of you who are interested in seeing a little bit more about these. They're pretty nice kits, I gotta say, highly recommended if you want something a little bit different to check out. Uh, it's just as much fun as Gunpla is just a different property. So there you go. If you guys do have any other further questions or comments, obviously there's a lot of different weapon options. I couldn't show you everything, but there's a lot of different stuff that you could do with these. So I think they're definitely worthwhile picking up if you just don't mind the little bit higher price tag for them. I think they're worth it. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you again to USA Gundam Store for sponsoring these reviews. You guys, do check the link to their store down below. And as always, guys, hope you're having a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey! Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code ZAKURILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye bye!